I am Hilali, Professor Buich. I'd like to invite all of you to my lecture. Today's lecture is based on Bangladesh National Building Code, Part 4. The module is NS3. Out of this part 4, I will cover Chapter 4, 5, and Appendix B and C. This part contains equipment and built-in facility standards. That is the, we shall talk about the repair, about the extinguishing system and, and their standard in this part. The provision of this chapter shall control the standard design, installation and maintenance of equipment and built in fixed facility or localized facility or portable facility. Extinguishing as it may be water, dry sand, ash, inert gas, dry chemical, wet chemical or mixed. This will be based on the type of fire. You know there are different types of fire which we, call, which we designate as class A, B, C, D, K. Depending on the type of fuel or type of material when it burns, type of classes depends on, and the type of exchange the agent will be also based on the type of fire. So the gaseous system shall be used, the water or foam cannot be used. Fixed air fire protection system means there are some pipe circuits to cover full or part of the building. There are some localized system like ball or sand granite in this form, which you can put inside some cabinet or in some area. So when the temperature right, it will burst and ignite and it extinguishes the system. There are some portable system which we use as a hand carried system. Normally it is used by inmate of the building, the time of fire. So you understand that all extinguishing system or type of system will depends on type of fire. So I like to give some brief idea about the type of fire. Actually, inside the building, the house, mostly it is class A fire. It's a residential building, but there are other type of occupancies that may involve flammable liquids, gas, that is the class B fire. And there are some electrical equipments in computers and that will create a class C fire. And if there is some combustible metal like magnesium, lithium, sodium, they will give a different type of fire. So that will be class D fire. And in the kitchen, if there is a cooking system, cooking oils first, that will give you class K fire. So we have to choose our extinguishing system depending on the type of fire. So if you do not know the source of fire, then you should not use randomly for any extinction system. But in general, we use water because most of our household system is involved with wood, paper, plastic, etc. And so most fire is classified. In other thing we have to consider the safety of the system. Actually, water is the best safe extinction system which can be easily used. Other type of system, gaseous or the other things, are not very safe system. But they will create some toxic environment. So it is not very good for the inhabitants of the building. So you have to be very careful about using other than water as the extinction system. So we start like to 
or a hydrogen system, this is a fixed water system. This is most widely used for class A fire. This comprises of a stand pipe, hose, in the real form or in the, in the rolling form. And there is some sprinklers, which is automatic system. There is densers or similar combination. So all for the type A, type class A fire, we use this hydrogen system. To start with the hydrogen system, you need some water, which must be available near to the occupancy. It can be a hydrant prefixed by the local government very near to your occupancy in the street. There is some hydrant from where you can have water. Unfortunately, no city or no area of Bangladesh, we have this hydrogen system. But most of the big cities of the world, they have hydrogen system. In that case, we need some water source to cope with this, our hydrogen system. In BNBC guide, we suggested, it is suggested that you have some water main connection and that main connection should be the hydrogen system, which is not existing. So we need some tank or pond or nearby anything which will work as a source of water during the event of fire. For the occupancies, it is suggested to have a roof gravity tank or a storage tank underground or elsewhere. So now you can see a typical diagram of a hydrogen system with a ground water tank. Because you have to deliver your water to different height or different story of the building at different level. So to pressurize the water, you need a pump. In the diagram, you see there is a pump. And there are actually two pump. One is pressurizing pump that we call jockey pump also. That is used to initially pressurize all the area of the piping. So at the time of event of fire, you can have it very quickly so that we can start spraying water to the fire very quickly. So it is, there is a tank in the drawing that is under the ground. So it will be filled up with some reserve water so that in the event of fire, there will be no delay of water supply. And if the tank will be fed from any source, it can be your underground deep well tube or local water supply. In Dhaka, it can be it may be washa or anything, or it can be any private arrangement to fill it all the time. So water is available at the tank. During the fire, when you are extinguishing this, if there is a shortest fire, so when the fire department come, they can also fill it by a local connection. We call it CMS connection. By using CMS connection, fire department directly can put to the host system or they can put in the reservoir if needed by using different arrangement of valves. In the event of fire, when there is a pressure, you start the pump, the pump will deliver water to all floor where you can have host system with a valve opening your valve and targeting your host nozzle to the fire, you can spray as desired. This is a simple system 
with gravity tank. If you don't have a gravity tank, if you have a rooftop tank, if the tank is at a definite height such that the pressure required for spray will be sufficient due to its gravity. Actually, we cannot put the tank on the top of the floor. In that case, in Dhaka city, particularly in Ajimpur or in Fokiraku, there is supply reservoir of water, very high. If it is directly connected with those type of system, you may have sufficient pressure to spray. In that case, you may not require pressure pump. But it is a normal. It is not normal in Bangladesh. So, in general case, almost all area of Bangladesh, you should have a pressure pump. If you like to have a sprinkler system with this, then again, you need the pressurizing always the pressurizing the system at that type or at that type event of fire when this sprinkler is heated and it will burst out and automatically the jockey pump and the pressure pump will activate it and you will get water spilled on the system. Uh, excuse, excuse me, Hello? Professor Halali. Yeah. Can you uh, put up your volume a little, a little bit or speak up a little bit higher? Is, 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 is it higher? Is, is it not, now you can hear me, please. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Then water hydrant system can be directly to that domain, which I tell you with us now. And you make the direct connection with the roof gravity tank, which I say. Actually, you need the pressure at the nozzle tip which is 200 to 600 kilopascal. If you have nozzle for the first state firefighting system, that is the inmate of the world, if they, if they like to fight, if their host system is around 38 millimeter diameter, then the pressure at the tip is 200 kilopascal. If this is sprinkler, if this host is used by the fireman, and in that case, if the hose diameter is more than two inch, then their pressure should be 300 pascal. And if it is used by the sprinkler, then pressure will be the 600 kilopascal at the other end. So depending on the type of system, there is some variation of pressure. And accordingly, we have to create pressure in our design of this hydrant system. When a system is built up, it should be tested according to the NFPA 25. Actually, BNBC suggests to use the NFPA 25 in the procedure of testing our hydrogen system. The testing procedure ensures the flow and the time of the system. Here I am showing a water reservoir or underground water, it may be underground and or maybe river tank. This is to ensure the water fire reservoir such that there will be always a level of water for water reservoir. You can see the tank here. If you use a single tank for your domestic supply and fire reservoir, so you domestic supply line should be connected, should be opened at a certain height such that always there will remain some fire reserve water. In no case, it will be drained out by domestic requirement. So there will be always a certain amount of water for firefighting. But there is a problem if, if this is the design, you can see the lower portion of the water will not recirculate. In Bangladesh, there will be always mossing. That means fungi, algae will grow very fast. And there will be some sedimentation deposition 
in that to protect that one you have to you should need to design such that the water from the bottom will circulate during the domestic resource so you see there is opening in the bottom water will be drawn always from the bottom so there will be no stagnation point in the tank such that there will be less chance of deposition of moisture so this is an idea of how we can recirculate but to make it very effective recirculation you can use other mechanical system for recirculation normally we do not use recirculation so they always there is some sedimentation or maybe so time to time it has to be drained there is a drain fall it has to be drained off and it will be clean but you understand cleaning is a loss of water huge amount of water you have to drain out the waste so you have to be careful about the waste of so the capacity of the tank is calculated based on based on the requirement of our flow table 41441 which i will show you to how to calculate what is the tank reserve size for your fire fighting this is the table from where we can calculate how much water we should keep reserve in reservoir and what is should be the size of our reservoir tank so in the figure in the left side you see the type of hazard of your building light hazard one light hazard Two ordinary hazard one, ordinary hazard two, ordinary hazard three, and you can see the occupancy type and the hazard in the bottom of this table. So depending on your occupancy, you can choose, you can select your occupancy hazard classification. Based on the classification, you will choose what amount of water you have to. reserve or you have to make a flow for the extinguishing of the system as for example if you have a garment industry as it, if it is think is g2 is the occupancy then our hazard classification is ordinary hazard 2 in that case the for this kind of system you have need about 3200 liter per minute of water for sprinkler system and for stain pipe you need 1900 liter of water per minute again this flow is a per minute how much time you need to reserve it is again depends to your building height so if your building height is within 51 meter you will take 75 minute if your building is more than 50 to 100 meter then you have to for 95 minutes if your building is above that you would need much more time here so if i think about the our low rise building garments factory then we have to for stain pipe we have to take 19 liter per minute of water and multiply by 75 that that is the amount of water you have to reserve for your garments industry or any occupancy if it is again with a sprinkler then you have to multiply 3200 into 75 minute if it is combined system then you have to calculate the maximum requirement either sprinkler or a stand pipe then you have to go for the higher one please note that values will be for one riser serving floor area 100 1000 meter so if your occupancy size is more than 1000 meter square then you have to add something more which is written in the following in this stain pipe system with more than one stand pipe the minimum flow is specified in the table for one for the first stand pipe plus 1000 liter per minute for each additional stand pipe 
so you need something more if you build is more than 1000 meter square and depending on that you have more stand pipe and for each extra one stand pipe it you have to add 1000 liter per minute and similarly you have to increase if your stand pipe is more than three four five but there is a limit if it is more than eight do not add anything so maximum you will add up to eight stand pipe roughly if you have a floor area about one lakh square feet you, you more than one lakh square you may need around eight stand pipe extra so this is a rough calculation of water tank with water tank size here are a few points about the fire pump so the fire fighting system shall be directly fed by automatic main fire pump fire pump may be centrifugal pump turbine pump turbine means it may be serviced with vertical shaft or any positive displacement pump positive displacement in that case we can use as a reciprocating pump we call a positive displacement pump but in general, normally positive reciprocating pump has its flow rate is less, very is not very high. So in that case, you have to think about the amount of flow whether the pump can handle. Normally, a centrifugal pump tap and pump can handle huge amount of flow. But if you need very high pressure, then you have to go for positive pressure, particularly reciprocating pump. Please. Remind that centrifugal pump shall not be used where a static suction lift is required. This is a different thinking which was not in BNBC 2006. Mm -hmm. During actually NFP 2016, before 2016, there is no provision of that one. That they they in NFP they added this new thing in after 2016 that centrifugal pump should not work under the static suction lift though it can work normally whatever you see in the firefighting engines firefighting vehicles almost always they use centrifugal pump but they work on the static suction lift but for the reliability in the new nfpa they suggest centrifugal pump should be always positive any time once the pump starts it shall run continuously on top stopped manually the pump shall be fully operational within 30 seconds there should be provision for manual starting where priming is necessary automatic priming equipment is necessary to ensure priming at all the time you know as you have jockey pump that will always ensure your priming also the fire pump shall not be used for other purpose the pump shall have the rated capacity as shown for photo i'll show you later fire pump install procedure and fittings and appear shall be followed actually in hydro system fire pump is very a critical thing so you have to be very careful about the pump and its capacity and the flow capacity so the pump shall be housed in a readily accessible position in a building of non-combustible construction. Normally, the building, the building of the firefighting pump is one hour fire protected. The pump shall be adequately protected against mechanical damage. There shall be provision for secondary pump, which can be operated by dedicated diesel engine or by an alternative power supply source. Actually, in NFPA, they do not allow the alternative power source. But in our country, which is very peculiar, almost all industry have their own power supply. Even almost all big housing facility or almost all shopping center, they have their own power supply. That is very different to the other cities of the world. So in BNBC especially, we write this word, by an alternative power source. 
and FPSS is a diesel engine directly coupled with diesel engine, but in BNBC, we add, it is added in a special word. If you have a different, another source, you can also use a, another pump with electrical power. But you, you need two pumps at the same time. One is running, another is standby. Quality of the pump assembly shall comply with the specification of the international system of fire. How it is specified, I can show you now. For pump, we need a maximum reliability and additional outlet pressure, which is not a general type of pump. So general type of pump normally is designed with maximum efficiency economy, but fire pump is designed with the maximum reliability and additional outlet. But you, you, you be careful about the additional outlet I will show you what is the additional output. This is the characteristics of a fire pump. This additional, that means, this is the, if I designed a fire pump with a nominal flow of 100, the pump should work 150% flow with a pressure not less than 65% of your design. So, if your design is 100, then when the flow rate is 150%, then the pump should work perfectly. And at the zero pressure, zero flow, the pump must supply, must the pump must create 140% than the design criteria. This is the very speciality of the fire pump. At zero follow, the pressure does not exceed 100 point times of the nominal value. At 1.5 nominal flow rate, pressure drop 65 point of the nominal value. Speed in this suction line should be such that it will be less than three meter per second. Because if you increase this velocity, there will be chance of stagnation and vortex formation if there is a vortex in the suction line you may lose flow rate mountings of the bearing of a fire pump should be such that it can run at least 500 5000 tower for its service life this is as per nft20 so these are the criteria then we have we, we some other extra criteria for fire pump if you procure a fire pump and if you like to test the pump, this, this is the criteria it must fulfill. That means when you test a fire pump after procurement, then you test the must match with this line. That means it should be, if rated capacity is 40, then the maximum variation with it is like the it should it, be it will 56 and the value of is 26. The max minimum of 65% rated pressure at 100% rated. This is the this is the required criteria. But when we test a fire pump can supply the system, fire pump test results not less than 95% of the flow rate. So a, the, that maximum variation will be allowed if it is 95% of the flow rate or if it match with the pump name plate specification to, to, to make it clear again with these writings, I am showing another curve. If the name plate curve is the red one, if you are testing, if it is the black one, the maximum variation will be this. If it, this variation is this, then we can, we can accept this fire pump is acceptable. So this type of variation from the design criteria of the fire pump and actual field test of the fire pump is within this limit, then we will accept this as a fire pump. And you can you have to remember that. Every year, you have to, you should need to test the fire pump and ensure this curve, the maximum variation, maximum flow rate and the variation. If it is beyond this, you, you, you are not ensuring the condition applied for a fire pump. 
So this there are some capacity table for a fire pump, which is available in the market. From this available size, you have to choose your capacity of the pump. So depending on your requirement of the your occupancy, the, you you have to choose the fire pump. It may be it, it may be around 250 gallon or it may be 300 gallon or 400 of answer. And it corresponding to this fire pump, you need this type of pipe with the connected with the pump. And the long, very long distance, the pipe diameter will change, but it very, at, that, at the entry and the discharge, you, you have to give this type of, this size of pipe with the pump. Normally, this is the maximum size we use in a fire pump. If it is more than that, you have to use more than one pipe. If your occupancy is so, so big, or it is designed that way, building a different type of building. So while designing this hydrogen system, you have to design your flow rate. You have to design your pressure. Actually, a pump is based on the pressure and the capacity flow rate. So whatever you have shown, you, you, you understand your flow rate, but you, you have to calculate how much pressure you need, how much pressure you were designing for your pump. So design your pump design pressure should be as follows. Actually, there is a pressure which at the nozzle outlet, which I showed before, and there is friction loss from pump outlet to the end of the nozzle Peak, there are the there are the pipe you have you have you have, you need to design to for the required distance cover distance and height there is some friction loss within the pipe within the valves within the bends so all together you have to calculate the friction loss and you have to cover a certain height that is the called elevation so you have to calculate the what is the elevation actually for one PSI, you have half P, on one feet of height, you have half PSI of pressure loss. For every one feet or every two feet, you have one PSI of pressure loss. That is the first loss for elevation. But for friction loss, you have mathematical calculation, depends on the variety of things. So that I will show just for idea, not a detail. For your detail, you need to calculate a lot of things. So this is the friction loss. <coughs> there is a coefficient of friction that will be taken from the chart, body chart, <coughs> and Q is the flow, and L is the equivalent length. We have I am saying the equivalent length. Equivalent means the distance length, and if you have a bend, if every bend has some equivalent length in the table, for every valve you have equivalent length. So you have to sum up all this length, length for host, length for pipe, length for valves, length for bends. <coughs> for everything, you have to calculate uh, what is the equivalent length. Use and, and, and then you have to calculate for the friction loss. You need, there is a table for the C, that is a coefficient chart. So there is, so this is only for this size of house, but if you have different size of house, so you have, you have to take other values from that. So all taking together, you can calculate the friction loss. So if you can the friction loss, you know your, you know your nozzle pressure, you know your elevation, so you can calculate your pump discharge pressure. So you know your flow rate, you know your pressure. Now you can design your pump. You can design your system. So this, there are some other points also for calculating. So just a few points which you can remember for your requirement. Actually, the hydrogen system it used by the fireman or inmate, which is available during fire. But if you are in occupancy, you you have to handle that. You cannot handle the firefighter hose system. If the firefighter, they are trained, they use a hose which is two meter, more than two inch diameter. That, that needs very special capacity. So 
normally there are three class of system one we call class one system that will be handled by the inmate or in the firefight both there is a class two system which is only for the inmate which is first aid system which will be used the inhabitants of the occupancy and there is class three system will be used by the firemen only so so according to your design it can be used by either trained person or either fireman personnel so normally trained person use a hose which is one inch in the real form or we are one on 1.5 in the hose form that will be used by the trained or amateurs and firefighter normally use the two inch or 2.5 inch hose system the amount provided the flow is given in the, in the table a stream shall be interconnected through the check valves to prevent the circulation i you, you I use i you show the typical diagram the minimum pressure at the outlet shall be 300 if it is the two inch millimeter 50 millimeter diameter hose if it is 200 it is 30 millimeter diameter if it is smaller it is 600 per pascal you have to remember how you design the maximum pressure at any point of the system shall not exceed this 10 kilopascal. This all your valve, all your valve line will be designed with, with the maximum pressure. This regulating valve need if your outlet pressure exceeds 700. So your outlet pressure should not be more than that. If it is more than that, you have to put extra regulating valve to keep it less than 700. Diameter of the stent pipe pump capacity shall comply with the flow and pressure requirement at the top most highlighted point. So we have to design with the basic theme, basic basic, and the basic assumption is that my pressure will be at the top most of the system will be the my basic starting. And then from that we calculate all other parameters. The start of fire water shall not be used for other purposes. The ground water storage tank be easily accessible to fire engine. The steam pipe shall be located intermediate stair landing or vestibule or nearby in non-combustible enclosure. It is normally if there be a position sometimes the air land standing stair landing from one to another, the distance between the stand pipe is more than the double of a stand pipe. Actually, a, a post pipe, the maximum length is 30 meter or it may be 100 feet. If you have two stair landing at a distance of more than 200 feet, then you must have an intermediate, intermediate position where you can put your a, another location for express system you have to design in that way so that every area of the occupancy can be covered can be reached by your spray nozzles or fire nozzle because the nozzle has a limiting length that is about 30 meter so if your distance from the stair landing is more than that so you have to give some position so that you have need some extra host cabinet uh, intermediate position then host cabinet should not be at a height more than 1.5 meter for ease of handling uh, and in inspection there sh there should be same as connection in the location for from the outside st street i have told you before the system shall provide adequate drainage piping to discharge under pressure because sometimes you need to test the system so always you have to have a drainage system such that you, if required, you can test the system. So you need some drainage system in addition to these other things. Similar, these are some other design of a hydro system. So a hydro system can be wet riser or it can be as a down comer. And you may have some high velocity projector. Wet riser means you have your pipe, which is always filled up with water. So at any time you can have water for your fighting at the time of infant fire event. So sometimes if you have the down comer, it is in the same language that is the 
this same pipe, it is fed it from the gravity tank, roof to gravity tank. It is a different name, but it is again is a riser. Then high velocity water is there is that you may have some design so that you need some high velocity water spray system. In that case, you need some special spray nozzle so that you can spray your area with small droplets at a high velocity. So you need some high pressure and you need some special nozzle to spray the area. You understand the much more you can spray with a small size of particle, the more area you can cover, the more effectiveness will will take place to you for ignition your fire. So the finest is the particle, the more area with a small water you can cover, and the more effective the fighting system. There is another one which you call the water mesh system technology. This is a very special type of water spring system with a high pressure and a very special nozzle. The nozzle will atomize the mist. Actually, with the system, you need some air pressure or nitrogen pressure so that the air will create the atomized water so fine that the, it will create fog or mist so that in a one liter of water you may have a more than 22 billion of droplets so one liter creating more than 20 billion droplets you can understand how fine it is it's a fog the size of the particle is around 10 to 15 micron so in that case by using this water you can fight class A, class B, class C fire also. So in addition to the A, you can use water for the computer, you can use it for the flammable liquid, you can use it for all the electric system. This is the very, very effective system and very safe system because it is using non-toxic material that is the water. Almost all gaseous hell on all other gas system is just those gases, those chemicals which is toxic. This is very dangerous. Which who spread that? Who will be rear that? So if we can use water mist for our extinction system, that is always safe. So it is safe for electricity, electrical equipment, computer. It is safe for what type of fire it is safer almost all type of fire except material fire so this is very safe so normally it is used by the the system is very effective so you know there is sometimes we need to cool our protection wall if you think our glass wall if it temperature is very high then we have to drench the wall. For drenching, we use a drenching system that is a different type of sprinkler system. It is nothing. It is a special type of drenching system which will be kept in certain area that if you like to cool some wall, if you like to cool some tank, as for example, if we have a generator, if we have a big size of fuel reservoir, to control the temperature of the fuel reservoir, it should, sometimes you need to cool the surface of the liquid fuel tank. In that case, we use the tensor. So that is mainly to not to the extinguishing, that is mainly to the control of the temperature of the surface which you prevailing in the in our occupancy. So tensor is mainly to control the temperature of the surfaces as you need not to extinguish any fire. So that we call the drenser. And there is another one system that is always, this is also a high part of a hydrogen system, but that is dry. You know, when if we put water always in the pipe, particularly like our country, there will be always corrosion. You know, water always some have some type amount of oxygen with it. It may be 8 to 15% of oxygen in the water. So due to the presence of oxygen, 
always the pipe inside will corrode the supplying system will corrode so if you can keep it dry then life will be the pipe will be longer life of the system will be longer but there will be a time gap to start finish so if you can properly handle a dry system can be what but it is very good for longer life very long life normally a, a, a hydro system does not last very much within 10 or 15 years you have to see you can see the the most of the part valves and the ones there these are corroded in particularly in our country so if you use dry system then it will last much much longer so you have to be careful a dry rising system <coughs> Now I like to talk something about the sprinkler system. <clears throat> Actually, sprinkler system is nothing. It is a special modification of the hydrogen system. So, uh, during, uh, in spite of the hose supply, hose and its nozzle, we need a network of pipes. Network of pipes with different arrangement so every location of the occupancies there will be a supply water line and a sprinkler nozzle it's all called a sprinkler head at a certain temperature of the sprinkler head that will bust because that there is a material which will melt at a certain temperature so at a certain pressure due to the certain pressure of the water inside the nozzle head it will come out it the, the nozzle, nozzle the head will open up and it will it will spray water to the area where the sprinkler head is positioned so what this head will be positioned in such a way at a height or and at a different angle depending on your area you like to cover and it will be connected by different size of pipe different size bigness with the number of with the size of the pipe, we, we, there is a number of head which will cover by a, a required amount of water. I will show you the table where you can see the size of the diameter, that is size, uh, that is the diameter of the pipe, how much sprinkler head you can install. Depending on this requirement, if you, if you really require 10 sprinkler head, you have to choose that type of that diameter pipe. If the number of sprinkler head, you have to choose the diameter and you have to connect with the water with a pressure which will continuously remain inside the pipe and that pipe will be maintained by initially by jockey pump. When any 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 occurrence happened then this jockey pump will give signal to the main pump or your, your <coughs> spingler will give the signal to the main pump and that will start automatically and you will find delivery of water to the end every spingler head the pipe scheduling size of the sprinkler for different uses may be in the according to the table i will show you the table is sprinkler shape serve <coughs> excuse me a maximum ceiling area specified in the table so for the, your sprinkler head there is a number of the sprinkler head so depending on the number of the size of the design of the design of the manufacturer it will give cover and it is a definite area of the ceiling area so depending on the design it will cover that one water supplying pipe and fitting for the sprinkler shall be confirmed to the standard accordance in this this days the sprinkler piping system shall be provided with adequate support that is the supporting of the pipe network and and and, and each pipe will be hanged from the hanger the hanger should be supported with an extra load so that in in the event of any accident or any um, natural calamities the, the 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 hanger will remain intact this is the table there is some material copper tube steel tube that is the standard we are making that so that is a different standard pipes this is the fittings <coughs> this is the pipes so depending on your requirement so you you will choose which one you like 
the, the type of the material, type of in the, 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 if you vary the type of material, the cost will be vary. So depending your requirement, depending your capacity, depending your 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 design, you will choose the pipe and and the pipe fittings. This will give you the pipe size and the number of spindler head you can fit. If you Pipe is two, one inch, and then you can fit two, two or one sprinkler for and, and a pipe. And so, if you increase the diameter of the pipe, your number of sprinkler will be more. So, if you have to design in this way, actually, that when you design the network, you have a main supply water line. From the main line, you have the branching of the smaller diameter. From the branching, you will select how much sprinkler head you, you, you can accommodate uh, according to the requirement. So you can see that, that 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 you can you can you can that if it is four inch there is no limit you can put whatever you like and for for that. So accordingly you have to design your network or pipe network, water supply pipe network, and the spindler head. This is a. This is a, I think this is the repeat of the table. So this is the area. Coverage of a sprinkler head. Actually, different manufacturer has different types. So, but uh, this is the general value. But uh, so normally for a sprinkler head, it varies. The, the floor area, the, the area coverage is more, almost one to almost 100 to 200. It, it, it is almost 100 to 200. So this is the lowest value 100. This is the highest value 250. Actually, the distance between one head to another, next one is 15 meter. So if you think of the 15 feet, 15 if 15 feet distance. So if you think they are very square, that is the, that is covered by a single sprinkler. So this is the nominal value, but if you like to put some design factor or safety factor. You can cut a little bit of 10 percent, 20 percent. But in 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 our country, last few years, in different garments industry, we have been visited. Mostly, they design with roughly 150 to 100 to 150. It is it is too high density. Actually, the high density does not give you extra. It does it it gives some extra money, extra design, but it does not give extra safety because. It is designed, whatever the design value, it should be within the limit of the design value. So it, you can you can use 10%, 20% as a safety factor. You should not make it 100% safety factor in its own case. But the, the, the way they design some of the design, they use less. Than, in, in some cases, I found that less than 100 also they give it for the, for the ordinary hazard, which should be the more than you, you see the for ordinary hazard it is 130 roughly 130 so there is no point of giving more than less than 100 in that case but actually the somebody designed that way to make it over sure no, no, it should not be but for so you you, have, you 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 see that normally the the, the variation of the from the extra hazard to very low is 100 to 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 to, to five for a sprinkler. This is a piping material. So if you have a copper type of piping material, or you can use depending on the STM value. So you, so you, so you, your hydro system should be connected from something, from some. There shall be CMS connection to sprinkler system for the building. All risers shall be connected through a gate valve with a main size, main of size equal to that largest reservoir. The sprinkler system shall be provided with adequate drainage arrangement. The drainage pipe shall not discharge into this sanitary sewer. All control valves and fittings shall be able to withstand the pressure, that is the maximum pressure for which you design your system. <laughs> we had some idea about the inspection, testing, maintenance. Actually, you know, this type of system, but particularly when the system is automatic, your maintenance must be very, very frequent. If it is not, you, you will lose your reliability. Actually, there are some 
statistical data for America or UK that is not very convincing. NFPA have some data for American standards. Their efficiency is not very high because the regular maintenance is not do that much so that uh, when you actually require that, it does not work perfectly. In Bangladesh, maintenance is always neglected. So if you do not maintain your system, at the time of event, you will not find any working condition, so you lose your reliability of the system. So all piping equipment shall be inspected for satisfactory support in accordance with this part of this code and protection from the damage and corrosion. All outlets shall be free from obstruction. So you have to maintain this very, very regularly, very regularly, you have to inspect. There is some inspect, inspection conditions as, as written there. I am not giving a detail of that. Maintaining the system shall be maintained for safe operation condition and tested, tested at least once, at least once a year. So you have to test every year. That's why we need a very effective Dennis system for testing the system. So, testing the fire protection plumbing system or part thereof shall be tested approved. So you need some approval from some authority. Testing machinery system, the hydrogen pipe shall be hydraulically tested at a pressure 140 1400 kilopascal or 150% of working pressure, whichever is the higher for two hours without any leakage at any point. The system shall also be tested for the required flow at the highest outlet. So this is the condition of testing a steam pipe system. So you have to have, think about the pressure and the total duration of the test and the observation you have to make, there will be no leakage. So these three should can be has to be maintained. And you have to test at the furthest point outlet so that the flow is maintained there. This is the test for steam pipe system. The testing for sprinkler system, the system shall be tested at least two hours for a pressure of 100 kilopascal or 350 kilopascal in excess of nominal working pressure when normal working pressure will be more than 650. If you understand that 650 and 350 is 1000, so whatever you say is 1000 kilopascal is a normal working pressure, but you may have some special case. So in that case, you have to test little bit higher, that is the adding 350 with your working pressure. The system shall also be tested for required flow at a highest outlet. So, so you have to test in sometimes you, a, a sprinkler is tested by putting a hot flame on, on a sprinkler and give you a fuse a system and then, then measure all the parameters. And that's all about the Hasse's hydrogen system. Now you have to talk some other system which you need to understand for your special design, special requirement. That is the other than water. There are different types of fix, fixed installation. This is required particularly for different chemicals, <coughs> different areas, different occupancy. You need to put a fixed system because water is not good for those systems. If you think about your computer room, if you do not want to have mist, water mist, so you need some fixed system to be installed there. If you think about your generator, if you think if you are similar type of electricity your transformer room, you sh if you don't have water mist system, then you need some other system. So those system can be divided into it is the central if centrally fixed or locally fixed. <coughs> if it, it can be centrally fixed, the system can be of system can be of foam. It, it can be it, 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 a central system. It, it can cover a zone or it can be a local area. 
So there is some pipe connection and the, then system will be a foam installation or vapor is decoding installation or dry powder installation or gaseous installation or dry chemical installation or wet chemical installation. You can, you can take a different type of installation. Then you have, you, have, you, have, you have your pressurizing system, you have your piping circuit system. So you have your alarm system. So in the event of fire, the alarm will first give you this alarm so that all people will go outside the system. After that, the system will operate. If pupil is there, if it starts immediately with this alarm, immediate with the fire initiation, the pupil who is working around that, they, if their life will be endangered because all the systems are toxic. Because not only toxic, actually they prevent oxygen to move around that. Actually, they, 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 they restrict they, not on the hot surface, they restrict all the, of the oxygen also. So before initiating of this system, they, there must be have an alarm system, which will give alarm first, a distinct alarm, so that people understand that their extinguishing system will start and they have to leave this space as fast as possible then the system will operate so there is some very idea special idea for different system foam extinct system shall be of approved type shall be installed in accordance with this vision of the manufacturer a foam extinct system shall be automatically actuated during a fire with provision of manual actu actuation Warning sign and the discharge alarm shall be provided. The system provides protection of boiler room and other oil and other hazardous storage. The different type of foam industries are there. So you have different companies, different manufacturer design in different way. So these are all market available proper extinguishing system. These are effective, these are very but you have to use it with a very good knowledge even and good practice there are other big systems the vaporizing liquid installation dry powder installation these are these are also the, there are different criteria so if, if you read this system these things you can you can understand this so These are all centrally fixed gaseous installation. So, some there is some localized fish installation. This is a container, containerized extinguishing agent that are available in different shapes and size to be placed in different locations, such as at the top of the cooker, in the kitchen, in the elliptic box, elliptic, elliptic areas, so that in the at the at the time of fire, these container will heat it will be heated and bust and, and it will release some extinguishing agent and extinguish the fire these are some locally agent in bangladesh sometimes we, 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 we there are some we find where there is a ball or some granite type thing it was imported and it was, sometimes it was tested and some of them were found good, some were not was found not sufficient, maybe for different reasons, but most of them were working properly. But you have to be careful about their performance because the location and the rise of temperature should be such that they, it, it will be positioned in the proper way. If you think about the kitchen, if you don't put in in a proper way where that the flame will be maximum, it will not start at this particular time. Then we have some, I, I like to give some idea about the portable fire extinguisher. You know it's, it is abundantly available in Bangladesh, almost all area of Bangladesh. There are different size, different types, different qualities, different manufacturers, and it is portable and it is used it is very handy, actually you know when the flame is on the any fire is very small. So if you have a small extinguishing agent, you can con control it very easily. And if you can control it very easily, the fire never goes up. You know, of course, that is actually after initiating a fire within three, four, five minutes, it 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 
goes up and 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 at 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 the same time it flush over when it flush over it's beyond our control so you have to try as fast as possible to handle the fire and if this fire is normally handled by using this portable fire extinguisher so if you are very careful in the fire extinguisher you can you can control fire in your premises but you have to be very careful about your type of fire first thing second thing is the way you are using it third thing is the way that the portable fire is working fine actually it we it has to be regularly maintained every every time you have to check and keep it working condition because with time though you are you put it very perfectly condition with, with time it 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 is it, it it is it becomes uh, unusable unusable because it this it loses quality it loses performance criteria so you have to test very very gradually very accurately every very time and you have to position and keep the portable extinguisher in a place that which will be always in front of the users so there are different type of extinguishers which we call a b c d k depending on the type of fire so you there is a table you, you can see depending on what is the extinguish a portable extinguisher type and what you can extinguish so if you familiar with this then you can fight if you are not familiar don't try to fight with the fire so only the trained person should fight this type of fire and his training is very simple if you like you get training and you you, you use this so on you Container. This type of marking is written always there. And either either A B C D or or this type of picture. From this picture, you have to understand what is the material you can extinguish, what you cannot. So you have to be very careful about this A B C D or this picture pictogram. So in in your bottle, there will be some. This is different type of container. This is a water pressurized water. You can you can use it. it this is carbon dioxide. This is a horn. So, so you can you can use that. This is A B C. It is written on A B C. It is K type. But there is other also K type. Which there is A B C. There is D C. There is B C. So depending on the A B C, this figure you have to you have to choose. In Bangladesh, Bangladesh B S T I have a rule. Depending on the chemical, there are different color of this extinct portable extinguisher. But we are not using this color. Actually, according to their rule, the carbon dioxide should be the, the, this this the cylinder should be black. So that by choosing the color color, you can understand it is carbon dioxide. But normally, people do not used to with this color type of so almost all everywhere almost we are it is red or all it is same thing same color but bsti have a color code that is our standard code a standard color but we are not habituated with the color so but if you have if you see sometimes the color of the cylinder is different that means this that color indicates the what is the content if you see a black color of cylinder that means it is with the carbon dioxide you should remember one another thing though i am showing here is a carbon dioxide actually there is a montreal protocol in 2018 carbon dioxide should not be stored in that way so so it, it now it not yet bangladesh but it, all over the country world now it is a bad item you should not use carbon dioxide because this is a, it is a greenhouse, greenhouse gas So that's all about the fire extinguishing. I'd like to say something a little bit about the tall building, though Bangladesh have, so far I know there is no tall building. Maybe there is someone. High rise building exceeding 80 meter, 80 meter. So about 25, roughly 25 story building, 25 story building. Bangladesh have one or two more than that. That is a tall building. 
the, 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 this, the quantity source and mode of water supply in tall buildings shall be according to the act. At the same time, you have used to call that one. But it, there is a, in high rise building fittings equipment for fire fitting may be subject to excessive pressure. So the pressure limit we have shown before will be a little bit different for the high rise building, tall building, sorry, so for tall building. Pressure on fire fighting equipment in tall buildings shall not be shall be reduced by dividing the building into different zones. So in that case, if you like to design, we have to divide the zones. I will show you a figure so that you will understand how it can be zonized. Separate automatic farm or combination of the tank and automatic pump shall be installed for supply water to the fire fighting equipment in each zones. This is an idea of the fire pump. If up to a certain height, you will as 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 it is as I described before. For for the high rise one, you you need another to, to cascading system. That the one pump will deliver its water to a reservoir here. Then another pump will be used for the secondary one. So by cascading the system, you can go the tall building. By so you need some extra pump extra area so that by by cascading the system you can you can go for a tall building to reduce the effect of very high pressure within the supply line and that's all about the firefighting standard system tonight like to talk something a little bit about fire detection alarm system Fire in a building behaves differently from fire outdoors, as you know. High temperature transmit is rise to the ceiling and is spread outwards and downwards. A smoke will pass through any space or opening. Early detection and rapid evacuation are very essential. So you know these few words actually. When, a smoke is, is made of carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and other toxic gas all are very dangerous for your life within a or two minutes if you inhale it, carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide itself with either a little bit higher concentration initially you will lose your sense and depending on this time you will you, you may die in a few minutes not more than two or three minutes so in some cases if, if the concentration is more than 50 or 20 percent in the room you will die immediately you will die. You will die immediately. Not with the toxic gas, by only carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. So you, have, you, 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 but unfortunately, toxic smoke give you some irritants, but carbon dioxide cannot not give you any irritants. So you, you will not feel. You will not think that you are smelling a very, very dangerous gas. So you are you are inhaling carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide. You will you will not feel it. You you you, you will not feel irritant, but you you will, you will lose your conscience. You will lose your life very quickly within within few few. That means three four minutes, two three four minutes, depending on the concentration. It is so dangerous carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide also. So actually, in any fire event, people normally die after losing sense initially and then by burning. Initially, they lose their sense due to the smoke, due to the carbon monoxide, due to the carbon dioxide, they lose initially their sense, and finally, they they, they, are, they, they will they cannot come out. So when in the event of fire, you have to come out from this area with the minutes, particularly, it, it, it will vary. Uh, you, you know, a smoke from one for one initially move very fast, it is three, roughly three meter per second, two to three meter per second. But if people can move with more than faster, people can go walk five to a normal walk, we can move five meter per second. If we walk, we can move faster. We are we are always faster than the smoke flow naturally. If can walk walk if naturally a smoke flow after burning, you can move faster that one. So you have to move faster than the smoke move. So that smoke will not accumulate to your area so that you can easily evacuate. Be sure you should walk within two, three minutes from the area of incidence. Otherwise, you cannot feel it. You cannot see a smoke. Can, you can see a smoke when it is with the carbon particle, but in normally a, a smoke with carbon monoxide, a smoke with carbon dioxide, you cannot see. You, you cannot feel irritant. 
So, but it will creating some problem in your cell. So, so be careful with this a smoke, though that you see or not see. If there is a fire, there is some propagation of carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. So be sure that you should evacuate with a few minutes. Don't delay any time. So you have to need detection of fire as quickly as possible. So you have to put your detector in such a way that at the, at the just initiating of this flame or smoke, it will be detected. So you have to be very careful about the detection. Don't depend on the other. On sometimes you cannot, you, you cannot, you even may not see, but you, whenever you see, do it quickly. Fire detection should always is always it is best if you can be burned by human surveillance. If any area, particularly I like to say, in the shearing area of a garment factory, there is a lot of people in the area, they can get human surveillance is much better than any detection system. Because human surveillance has always always good, they, they can see the flame or they can see the smoke very quickly. So human surveillance is so in the area where human surveillance is not possible. So you must put some automatic detection system. There are different type of automatic system. So I will come to it. Actually, when there is a fire, what will happen? There will be some smoke, there will be some heat, there will be some ions which will generate. So a smoke is a color colorful detection. There is some ion which has not color. There is some gaseous detection, and there will be a detection of flame, and there is detection of heat. So by detecting the heat, or its gas, or a smoke, or ion, or by detecting the flame, so we have three different types of things. The one is detection of heat, detection of the smoke, that means as ion, ionized thing, anything is, is we call it a smoke, and last thing is the video or the color of the flame that we have we have with these three types of detection system is there so depending on your area you have to choose which one you like but there is no system which detect everything so you have to see there is no system a single system cannot detect everything so you need different system for different area or you need multiple system all together at a time for detail, for detail, I uh, we should, I should go to the appendix for for and the appendix see detailed guidelines for selection and sighting of the fire detection system. I will explain that one. First, I like to talk something little bit of fire alarm system because after detection, the all human being will be alert about the sense that there, there is there is incident of fire. In the incident of fire, panic management shall be the prime of sunshine of for a successful location, delayed aggression or evacuation. So then you have to manage the panic situation. So for management of panic, you need some rule, need some practice. The practice that is a practice you, you, you should drill sometimes. And for the, for the other thing, you have to have to give them knowledge so that they, they do not be panic. So for successful relocation and the, uh, delayed aggress or evacuation, you, 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 sh you should not be panic. Activation of alarm shall be sequential or compatible with all the design scenario. A general announcement of fire shall be done initially. The, uh, during the, if it is a multi-story building, all floor should not be signaled at a time. In that case, all people will come together. That will create a problem. Actually, initially, first you have to evacuate the room where the level where the fire is incident and the high just higher level not the level the affected level and just above the higher level these two levels should be first initially informed and they should be active they should be initiated for evacuation so you have to give an alarm sequentially and you have to decide accordingly and and, and then send you the person responsible for the evacuation shall be alert through a password so all persons should be alert first so that they can take a step as per design scenario a systematic evacuation protocol shall be developed for relocation delegation immediate evacuation 
the alarm system the allows the application of alarm signal to one or more zones at the same time shall allow voice paging to the other zones or in any combination activation of fire extinguisher system shall have a supervisory alarm an automatic extinguisher system capable of discharging other than the water extinguisher system as in shall be direct distinct alarm system so so these are the different type of alarm system so there are three types of alarm system normally this is audible alarm this is a visual alarm and the display alarm normally we we know that there is audible but at the same time there are some person they have a problem with the audible they should be think they should be given a alarm visually so that they can see the light different type of light that is that is we are normally so in the ambulance there is a light blinking so by by doing this type of visual alarm and and some type of display of gum can can be graphical or textual can come on the monitor of the tv or or anything any display so people see the alarm so that they can activate they can initiate a program so little bit about the appendix selection of site for detection actually two jump detection is can you have to choose a smoke detector where temperature is high uh, you can we can choose heat temper heat, heat detector where is dust is more so by selecting this type of criteria we can select whether you will use heat detector or smoke detector another thing is when there is a line of sight of advantage only in that case we can use the flame detector actually for flame detector you need some line of sight problem this is an example of a heat detector point or spot type of heat detectors are found both type of heat detector they are they are classified sensitive element there is there so it can be fixed type of temperature detector or a rate of rise of heat detector so heat can be detected in two way at the temperature or the rate of rise of temperature by doing this reading of the temperature rise so you can you can this this system can detect and if there is there the area is dusty or moist or this in that area we use a heat detector this is normally very safe to, to detect heat so these are the area where heat get to heat heat detector can be used in the garage in the kitchen so normally these are the area where heat detector can be used this is a flame detector actually this is not very convenient where the line of sight of is not used if line of sight can be the area then it is very convenient but it is very costly thing it is it is not very very costly thing it will detect the flame light so you need some line of sight position actually normally the line of sight is not very available so this is an smoke detector this is very commonly used but this is used but in our country due to the dust moisture it gives normally it, it is very difficult to have proper signal it gives some false alarm so false signal so you have to be very careful with this so it is setting and it normally it is is very difficult another thing is in in our country there is always we keep our door windows open and we always in which particularly garments factory we use a lot of exhaust for exhaust fans so there is a lot of flow of air so we, as there is a flow of air any any smoke coming from a spot area that that is easily diluted so it, it is very difficult to get signal from this type of smoke detector but it is normally used but its proper detection is always hampered or sometimes due to the dust area dust deposition in our country there is always some false alarm so sometimes it is equipped with some tube special tube to ever this type of thing but its efficiency it, it, it is it is prone it is prone to have false alarm it is prone to have uh, wrong indication visible so for a smoke detector particularly in our country where we are habituated with the very natural 
air velocity naturally air flow and naturally if we, we always have our room with a very high velocity ceiling fan fellow in that case there is every chance for wrong detection so you have to be careful about fitting this smoke detector their location is very so a, detect, a, smoke, a smoke detector or not it can smoke or it can be with ionization chamber actually a smoke is a, is a carbon particle normally which is in black color but if it is ionization actually for from any any flame that some ion forms and if this ion goes to the close of the smoke detector it can detect again so there is always chance of wrong detection so the, again, again, a chemically sensitive smoke detector, actually, if I like to detect carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, particularly in the garage, but in the, the, under, in the underground floors, there is the accumulation carbon monoxide so to, for detecting this deposition of accumulation of carbon monoxide or other combustible other product. So you need some detection of the chemical sensitive detection. These, these, these detections are chemically sensitive, so we can detect them. This is the site setting of the detector. Actually, how location of the detection, there are a lot of combination of areas. Actually, all manufacturers have their guidelines, so how the detector went. But you have to be careful about the building beams, columns, or shading, staircase, various forms of overheading. So partition walls. So depending on this, you have to decide what is the best location for a setting. So this you have to follow the guidelines from the manufacturer. Actually, every manufacturer has their own 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 suggestions. But you have to think about your egress system shape, particularly or a stair or lift. For these are the area you some put some a special detector so there is every chance that the exhaust air flow cooling air they, they create obstruction for detection of this so you have to be very careful with this keeping this detector at the proper location now I like to finish this chapter part of the part that is chapter three, and I, I like to start with the chapter five, which will give you some requirement for the fire detection extinguishing system. So this is some specific requirement which you will give put in this area. But you have to remember a specific requirements need a specific requirement for the occupancy. So you have to first define how a occupancy would build up. If it is that, only that condition, you have to accept this recommendation. You have to change the condition, you have to make your own performance based design. I can repeat this one, please remember that. As for example, your building is type 1A, it is 4 hour. If your building have a class of material, class 1, or class A, then these are the following suggestion we, 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 that you can meet. If it is different of that, if your combination is different, then all your building, all your occupancy has to be performance based. So here, uh, whatever I give as a specific requirement is assume that it is type 1A and your class of material is class A or class 1, whatever you say. So with, with this basic basic assumption, I, I am coming to the, some points. In this chapter is to reduce the probability of the injury or death from the fire structure failure or confinement extinguished evacuation. Provision of this chapter shall be considered as a minimum requirement. So if you like, you can give more. Passive and active permanent based fire protection shall be designed for all the type of accident, but 
if it is a particular type, then we'll give some suggestion. Passive includes the arrangement of building. Active means detection, alarm, extinguishing C-files and equipments. So we have talked already about the passive system a little bit more. Then we have some built-in machinery, equipments we have talked about. So now I will talk something for performance-based design. What is performance design means? Actually, for performance design, we have three types of scenario. One, first is building class fire resistant rating. Then you have to you have to ensure what type of class of building you are designing. That means what what type of material you are using for your every element of this structure. So based on this data, you have to be ensure. The heart in your, your building classification and your resistant rating because all your building internal structure is based on these two. So you have to be take data for the following number one, all surface finished material, joint of the structure member, the structural member, all slabs roof slabs, joint between slabs, all exterior walls, all interior walls, partition, suspending ceilings, everything. So you, you, you have to need the data for all structural, these are all structural elements, so that you can classify your building, you can classify, you can buy what type of building you like to design. So first, you have to design this term, the all other. Second scenario will be the, your, your occupancy specification because depending your occupancy, you have different type of combination of fire extinguishing system and fire extinguishing passive fighting system. You have already discussed. So you have to be very careful about your occupancy. Not only only the occupancy, a little bit more, the occupant activities, number of and location of the occupants, room size, number of control areas, finishing and contents, fuel properties, fuel properties of what? Which, what type of fuel are available? The fuel is not, is the class of materials and ignition source, ventilation condition and fire item ignited, ignited and its location. So you have to assume where your fire can initiate what is the location of that initiation? You have to imagine, you have to find that area, that location, which is critical for your occupancy, for your building. So in the, for the second scenario, you have to find out the location and the area which is much prone to emission of fire and how this fire can propagate uh, depending on the type of material and what is the total volume of fire load you have to control by, by your design. Third thing is the main the combination of all of these, the largest possible fuel load. So you have to calculate the total, the largest possible fuel load, the total fuel load of the area, or in a compartmentation or in a zone, what is the largest possible fuel load? The, the, where, if there is event of fire, this is, this is a slow developing fire, and if the slow floating fire, what are the proximities, or, or what is the high okay, from the this from this low floating area, what is the distance of the high occupancy area? So you have to find your uh, the critical area in respect to your fire, in respect of your occupancy. So, and, and, and the proximity is this two, you have to find this one. A concealed space adjacent to the largest occupant room having highest number occupant without either detection system or suppression system. So your system, you can design in such a way that there, there is no detection, there is no fire system. You have to imagine that one, that you have a room which is highly occupied and the system don't have any detection and the system don't any passive and what will happen? Keeping that idea in mind, you have to think you building design, building partition, your passive fighting system.
Again, you have to think about your ultra fast developing fire in the main exit area, but reduction in the number of available means of egress. So you have thinking that you have a ultra developing, fast developing, ultra developing area, that means there is a deflagration. Deflagration means a flame, a, 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 a fire which is moving less than sound velocity, but more than our normal velocity. So it, it, it varies, it varies. But uh, the, the pressure variation is about 0.5 PSI. So with this deflagration, a fire can move faster than we move. So with assuming this thing, with assuming your egress system, you have to design your building your occupancies. You have to think about an unoccupied room or other area from where a fire can start. So you have to think also the a room which is not occupied. As for its example, it can be a storeroom. It can be an unattended room. You have to think about that area where fire can start. Then the reliability and the degree of design performance for the fire detection and protection system. Then you have to think about the reliability. So uh, you have to think about the reliability, your, your, your detection system. Actually, all detection system does not rely. So you, you, have, you have to think about the how, how percentage it is reliable. It is 50%, 60%, 70%. So depending on the reliability, you have to put an extra detection system. You have to design with the safety to protect the system. The scenario shall not be considered a room or a space or building where fire detection protection system or any independent features are absent. So the scenario shall not be considered for a room or a space of a building where fire detection and protection system or any independent features are absent. So we will not consider this one. We will think about this other detection system, but we will not think about this. So considering these all the things, then you have to design performance. We have to design. So you have to again to the I repeat, you have to for performance design, you have to you have to design your occupancy, your load, your rooms. You have to find your critical one, why what is this critical as far depending on the occupancy, as far depending on your ignition source. Then you have to find design your building structure every element which one can how much time you will get and how much fire safety you can like to give all and every part of a structure element it can be anything it can be any joints or, or slabs or partition or everything you have to design all the things then you have to combine all the things and taking all fuel load all rooms and taking the critical condition, you have to design your performance based detection and performance based extinguishing system. This is a little bit idea about the performance based design system. Now, a fire protection plan. Actually, when you need to put a design a building, you have to submit a fire protection plan. A building or a part thereof must have a fire protection plan for the following cases. So there are some special case. Actually, if you have a very small building, a small house, then you do not need the fire protection plan. But if you have a high-rise building, you need a fire protection plan. And other things, if you have a G, H, J, K, M type of occupancy, and if is a certain area is certain more than a certain area, then you need a fire protection system. A3 occupancy containing 30 or more during unit, A4, A5 having gross floor area of the building more than other, you do not need a fire protection system. Part of a building used as a mercantile assembly system or healthcare, you need no fire protection system. But if you have more than that area, you need a fire protection system. Having gross floor area of the building over 330 meters square, you need a fire protection system. Whenever you have alteration of building or a partition of thereof, you have you need a fire protection plan for the following cases. 
what will what is present in a fire protection system in a fire protection system you have to give this following information building address height of dump in meter occupancy classification detail occupant load and you have to give a floor plan when showing all floors exits corridors partition serving for a fire separation in the compartment location or rating of the required enclosure rating of the required window less stair with pressurization exit discharge location of front space including states width of the everything plus so in your plan you have to these all of the details so initially you have to inform information about the buildings and about the design and then you have to give the description of the safety system features which includes communication system alarm system detection system location of fire fire command station elevator recall emergency lighting and power extinguishing equipment compartmentalization horizontal exit mechanical ventilation or air conditioning a smoke control system equipment furnishing type of materials place of assemblies fire department access other system required or voluntary to be installed so these are all the parameter you have to give in the fire protection system finally two person has to design one the architect who is the main designer and the person who is the responsible for fire protection design so a fire protection design has to be signed by the same architect who is signing on the drawing and the person who is responsible for the fire protection design so 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 it's a, that's all about the fire protection plan now i'll talk something about the special requirement of different occupancies this is the specific requirements of some buildings so giving before the giving the recommendation for any occupancy we are taking the assumption that the building construction type is 1a and building surface is to class 1 that is all of any occupancy type and construction other than this type then it is design will be performance based if there any change of type 1 a or type class 1a then design will be performance based so with with this assumption there is some recommendations <coughs> for occupancy a1 and a2 that means for a single family dwelling or two family dwelling for building having total floor area less than 500 meter square fire detection and fixed fire assessment is not required so this is a small type of building you do not need detection or fixed fire fighting building exceeding total floor area of 500 meter square shall have manual alarm system and portable extinguisher so these are the again i say these are the minimum requirements if you like to increase more than that that is the owner's requirement but as per code this is the requirement for occupancy a3 flat or apartment up to 33 meter that means low rise building fixed fire fighting arrangement shall not be required fixed fire fighting shall not be required no problem is required no protection is required within the dwelling unit of high rise flat and apartments manual alarm system and fixed fire system shall be provided in the landings of fire stair or in the lift lobby 
as per the provision of this code. So you, you have to give hydrogen system of for this type of system. <clears throat> for occupancy of four mass boarding house houses up to two story height fire detection fire alarm fire fighting arrangements shall not be required if it is building have three story above floor area less than 300 meter square shall not require fire detection and fire extinguishment arrangement for floor area of three area story building having more than 300 meter square per floor per floor remember per floor and less than 33 meter height that is it is low rise building having corridor central corridor with rooms on both side manual fire alarm system shall be provided along with the portable fire extinguisher instead of double loaded corridor a single loaded corridor having three meter width shall not require any detection and fire alarm system so you may, you may you may think what is the double loaded or is the single loaded actually if have have a, com a common corridor that is a two side is a building or working two side is a um, residential area or boating area then it is called single loaded if the corridor have to, both side has the its rooms then it is double loaded if there is a 3 meter corridor then we had there is no not that corridor can be used as a, a smoke free area that's why you do not need something instead of double loaded corridor a single loaded corridor having three meter which shall not require any detection and free fire system because the corridor itself give you some safety because it is more than three meter width actually if, if it a distance three meter is think is always normally think to be a one hour fire rating. Normally, fire or smoke will not move more than three meters horizontally. That is the idea of this design. High rise boarding house, mass, and hotels manually operated electric fire alarm systems shall be operated along with the hydrant system. So, always high rise buildings need a hydrant system. Hotels, lodging house have a different different combinations and they are a different type of firefighting system. So you can see here the, the, the arrangement of this firefighting system depending on the height and the floor area, there are a different combination of firefighting arrangement. So if, if, I'm not right, reading all, all the points. So you, you can read from here and I think you understand all these things very easily. So I, I, for educational low rise building with open corridor again, if the building is open corridor, which is very common to our Bangladesh, particularly outside the Dhaka. So the all all, all education institute has, has a milk has a hair baranda, which is three, almost about three meter width. Uh, fixed de detection and fast detection shall not be required. Where you have wide three meter wide bananda, you do not need some high rise building or building having central corridor with classroom on both sides. Manually fire alarm hydrant system shall be required as per protocol code. Single loaded open corridor having more than three meter or more than more shall have detection and another system only. So you have to be careful about this corridor size and whether it's single loaded or double loaded. Fire hydrants cannot be used to extinguish fire in this case. Area appropriate portable fire extinguisher applies shall be installed as per standard. Actually, for any education, there is some laboratories or other areas which is very sensitive area. In that area, actually, you need some other than hydrant system. You need some portable extinguisher appliances and other things, particularly those special areas. This is some healthcare institutes. Here you need some portable fire action gear. Fire detection and fire fixed fighting arrangements shall not be required because it is very small size. 
but custodial C2, the similar thing is not required. For C3, C4, C5, manual operator elective fire alarm system shall be installed, portable fire extinguisher application shall be installed. Healthcare facility, depending on type, it, 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 there is a lot of variation. Manually operated elective fire alarm system or automatic fire system shall be installed in the duty room so that the duty personnel receives the fire warning well in advance. Portable fire extinguisher appliance shall be installed for low rise healthcare facility building with more than 300 meter square full area performance based fire fire system shall be required so you have to, you have needs performance design for healthcare so you need some lot of detail for building as like hospitals for high rise healthcare facility building manually of electric alarm system shall be provided along with the high tension system For business class, actually for business class, there are a lot of arrangement, a lot of design, and corresponding to this lot of design, you need a lot of active fire protection. So there you have to, I am not going details of this. If you, you have, you please read the left side, a type of buildings and the buildings, areas and floors and corresponding, there are some suggestions for active fire protections. So if you use some liquid or solvent, other different types, then you have to give some different chemicals. So you have to think about the stress chemicals or other things present in the building, particularly electrical distribution panel or computer. So you have to think arrangement of this differently. For high-rise building, you have to be very careful about that. Manually operated electrical solar system shall be provided along with the hydrogen system. <clears throat> for the industry, actually, industry has low hazard industry, moderate hazard industry, G2. In spite of that, there is some criteria depending on the population. For G1, Manually operated electric fire alarm system shall be installed with portable fire extinguisher or hydrogen system when equipment loads are not more than 150. If it is more than 150, you have to give it performance based. Very straightforward. So you have to give a detail of this if, because its population is more than 150. For the moderate hazard industry, as of today, is a government industry. Among the moderate hazard industry, where large amount of occupants are densely population, populated in the building, the active fire protection shall be performance based. So actually, for this, 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 all, all these factories has very special arrangement, special design, so it has to be performance based. <clears throat> fire safety requirement for such type of industry is elaborate as follows. It's a little, it's a little bit elaborated. Fire occupancy load is more than 150 per population area. Per production area, you have to think about that word, per production area, shall have a minimum 3.9 meter square of area volume of per occupant. So there is a limitation of the air volume of that if the population is more than 150. Production, large production area, that there shall have direct exit from the ground floor. The exit door shall be used by only the occupant of the ground floor. So power production filler area must have direct access to the ground floor. <clears throat> Buildings less than 30 meter height, that is low rise building, shall have an open stair and the interior stair. So you, you, you can remember what is open stair and on the interior stair. Open stair means a stair which have at least one side 50% open, that is open stair. One side, 50% of that side wall is open, that is open stair. There is so no chance for what is more position. So open, each of open stair and the interior stair shall be protected by fire rated enclosure. So if it has an interior stair and 
then then if it is that it has to be protected by a fire rated enclosure so in that case the stm must be fire rated enclosed i think <laughs> here here first line is there is something wrong buildings less than 40 meter and shall have open stair shall not they should be shall not have open stair that the interior stair shall be protected fire protected if it is open stair that is different so the if you please sorry for that if there should be a not open stair that we interior stair open located about 30 meter or above all stairs shall have a smoke roof and closure so that is the thing for high res building all stair must be must all stair must be a smoke proof and closure shall have a smoke proof and closure <coughs> So there are some other things about the moderate health industry. All will the wall windows, all openings, all exterior walls, possibly by occupant loca located above the three meter in height, shall be protected by grills. So all opening must be protected by grills so that they cannot jump. <coughs> Actually, when there is a fire, people have a tendency to jump over. What happened <coughs> in the last week? In the Narayan Jones, some people jump and died. So there should not be any open open thing. All the raw materials, finished goods, and accessible accessories shall be stored in control areas. The control area means a area which is one hour fire rated, at least one hour fire rated. So all 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 raw material, finished goods, and accessories shall be stored in a control areas. Density of stores material per control area shall be shall not be exceeded the standard value. Actually, there is some lot of values which will ensure the standard one. So it is not can be said in, in a single line. So you have to see the standard values for a store as cargo lift and passenger lift shall have a smoke proof lift lobby. This is true if this cargo lift moves more than two story. If it is more than one story, you do not need that one. It is not here, but you remember that if a cargo lift moves only to a story, it did not need a smoke and closure. If it moves with within the, beyond this two story, it needs lift lobby. A smoke proof lift lobby. Occupant load in a single effective undivided space shall not exceed 600. Occupant load in a single effective undivided space or we can say occupant load in a compartmented area shall not exceed 600 so actually if it is more than 600 you have to compartment the area so you need some compartmentation of that area if it is more than 600 areas we and in process store shall have the hydrogen system so in any factory there are two areas where we put some material to to work in progress material other than a storage, there is a temporary storage. So the area and is a process of storage shall have hydrogen system. In the utility occupancy areas, fire extinguish system shall be installed as when utilities. So it is already explained in the, in the, in my last lecture that what the utility should have. Up to 700 meter square single effective undivided space in a floor shall be installed with manual fire alarm system with portable fire action system or high tent. So this is the maximum area that will be in a undivided space and then undivided space must have individual alarm system and portable fire system. Above 700 meter square single effective area undivided space in a floor shall be fitted with a manual fire alarm system and with high tent system. So, so these are the some criteria for, for the G2 system. A storage, it is it, it, it is different area. It totally depends on the type of storage. Manually operated electrifier or system shall be installed depending on the type of material to be stored performed by fire detection shall be maintained. Because the storage has a different type of type of material, and it can you cannot ensure what is the type what is the class of fire 
So depending on the type of material, type of file that can be happen, so we, we, we have to decide about the firefighting system that is to be performance based. And, and for moderate fire system, that is must that all of it should be performance based because it is a risk area and it does not give any specific thing. Assembly have different combination, lot of combinations. So you have to read it. I'm not giving it this idea. It's just a very few idea. So you, you have to go in detail for this. Here is a, a very small, some few points. You should not all divide by it with this. You have particularly you have to read all this. Actually, these are very few things. You, you should read all the things in detail. For the large assembly of fixed feet, all auditorium, corridor, greenhouse, green curtain area to assembly building shall be fitted with manual fire fighting system. And the performing stage should preferably be converted with an automatic system. This is very special. That's why I'm saying that they, particularly in the performing stage, always that should be covered by an automatic fire system. This is very, and this is the, this is for fixed arm system. Fixed seat. Actually, assembly have two types. One is fixed seat, another on another without fixed seat. So fixed seat is a big size, so you have to be careful about that. So I'm not reading all other things. So please, sorry about that. The hazardous area, all hazardous occupancies shall be installed with automatic fire alarm and automatic fixed fire. fire fitting gases or foams or dry chemical system or compatible with the class of fire shall be installed because it's a hazardous that is a totally isolated building that will be different from the other occupancies that the, the, the hazardous depends on the type of material here is stored so you have to design accordingly whatever type of chemical you use whatever type of fat that can initiate because depending on that type there may be different type of fire and you have to find that one the garage all the same things so you have to fit with some Fire dating area, it is a fire dating one hour fire data. And, and again, it depends on the size. If it is 700, 500, 7,500 7, square feet more than that, you have to complementize. Here it is not written. You have to be careful about that. If size is more, then you have to be careful about the gathers also. <clears throat> For occupancy utilities and miscellaneous, you have to go for an APA because they, they, that will be a performance base and the type of building is different, everything is different, so you have to go for the, go to the NFPA. Now I'd like to talk something about the Appendix B, fire protection consideration for venting and industry and storage. This appendix covers venting requirement for, for industry. Provisions applicable to factory and storage facility of large floor areas without dividing walls and enclosures. This is the special condition for this type of thing. So while considering this, we have two criteria. One is a fire or a smoke layer that does not enhance the burning. Remember that that does not enhance the burning. That means the fire it generates, it produces something, a smoke, which does not accelerate heating. It accelerates flaming. But there is some flame, there is some fire. The product of the fire enhances the flame again, so it accelerates. That is deflagration. So I will give you some idea about deflagration. Actually, there is another fire which we call detonation. That is exceeding the fire which is more than the sound velocity. What happened in Nimtali and what happened in Chakbaja in Bangladesh? There is a chemical which is the fire speed was like the more than the sound velocity that is the detonation that explodes but in the fire in the narangas is something like deflagration and the fire in nimtoli and then that is like detonation which is, but in our normal fire that is the fire the smoke that is a fire like in a fat tower 
This is the duration of this fire. The fire in Sparta is something in just fire and smoke that is in fire in Banani, just for example. Fire in Narangans, in some area, in some extent, particularly in the fourth, fifth floor or sixth floor, that is the deflagration. And in the Nimtali and in the Churihatta, then that is the detonation and something little bit deflagration and the end of the deflagration, but it is detonation. Actually, detonation and deflagration, there is a narrow band the differences. The deflagration is the starting from the fire normal to the very high velocity. Something we are talking about, the venting of fire and smoke that does not enhance burning rate. So this type of burning, you, you, you need to give some smoke proof, a smoke releasing vents. Venting requirement varies with the rate of combustion, composition of the combustion product, shape, size, packaging of the combustion material, as well as the size, height of the stock. So you are designing the vent, you have to consider all this. Depending on the material, the deflagration, not rich, but it is very close to the deflagration. So the rate of combustion, it may be such that there will be huge amount of smoke. So you have to design accordingly. Vent area required to achieve a mass flow rate through the vent that equals the mass, mass rate of smoke production. So you have to make an estimate of that how much smoke can produce and what will be the size of your vent. Venting device shall operate automatically at the earlier sign of the fire. And, 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 it, it, and if the temperature rises beyond 150, and, and then it will operate automatically. This automatic can be done by its design, it automatic can be done by, by automatic sensing or the other thing. Vent area should be size made the design of the platform of the NAPA 204 and maintained as per NAPA 204. So it will design according to the four and maintain as well before. Design of venting for the sprinkler building shall be based on the platform analysis. While automatic experts are installed, the sprinkler shall operate before the vent system com comes into operation. So if you're careful and then the sprinkler shall operate before the vent system comes to operation. So you have to synchronize this in, in this way. In industrial building, exterior walls, windows shall not be accepted as satisfactory means of venting, but many may be reckoned as additional. That is an additional window door that is additional, but you need vent. Window is not a vent. That is an addition. Releasing mechanism of vent Close closure shall be simple in operation and shall not be dependent on the electric power. Automatic operation shall be achieved by actuation of feasible links or other metal heat of a smoke detector by interlocking with the operation of the smoke system or to open by counterweights utilizing the force of the gravity or spring. Vent shall be properly seated at the highest point of each area to be covered Minimum vent open shall not be less than 1.25 meter in any direction. So that is the minimum side. Vent spacing shall be designed considering the fact that higher number of smaller vent is better than a smaller number of large vents. Now something about the deflagration venting. <coughs> deflagration is the subsonic propagation of the fire or the smoke at a pressure about 0.5 bar. Deflection vent design involves a lot of variables because there is a lot of variation of propagation. No venting recommendations are currently available for last for fast burning gases, such as hydrogen. Again, no venting recommendations are currently available for fast burning gases, such as hydrogen. So for hydrogen, there is actually this is this is very fast. This is actually not deflagration. This is something detonation. Fast burning as I said. Be careful about the fast burning gas as deflagration can readily be undergo transition to the detonation. That is the reason. So see, in that case, you should not design anything. Deflagration venting is provided for enclosure to minimize structural damage. Actually, detonation, when it is closed, it may explode at a certain stage because then deflagration transit to the detonation. That's why to release, to, to, to minimize the, the explosion, so there will be some venting 
which will collapse first and it will release the pressure. The venting area shall be distributed as symmetrically and as eventually as possible. This is a part of the design distribution. The need for effluration vents can be eliminated by the application of the explosion prevention technique described in NFP 69. So you have to read for a detailed design. As far as possible, hazard areas shall be segregated by means of firewalls and part walls to prevent a spread of fire. Actually, for this type of fire, you expect the deflagration. Please segregate by means of firewalls and part walls or it has the building as, as far as possible. That is the main thing which should be done, which was should be done in Churihatta, in 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 in, in Imthodi. Those buildings will should not be there. That should be there in other location. In Narangonj, this area where their fuel was there, that should be segregated by part wall or by totally detached area. That's all. Thank you everyone for listening me. Thank you, everybody. Assalamu alaikum. Now, question, please. This, the second question is, what is the specific requirement for a stand pipe and a sprinkler system for GT occupancy as per the NFC 2020? <laughs> it was very much clear in the Accord Alliance guidelines. Why still it is not clear in BNVC? It was very much clear in Accord Alliance. I think it is not clear in Alliance. Almost all area, they said it is sprinkler. Actually, BNBC on, do not it says it is sprinkler. Accord, Accord and Alliance, whatever they've done, you, you, you may know in RSC now, they are changing almost everything. Out of 1,600 garments factory under Accord, only 360 factory had got the permission. All other 1200, more than 1200 garments is lagging. They cannot satisfy Alliance Accord till now, after seven years of Alliance Accord. So whatever you commented may not be true because I am still working with RSC. I know the details. They, they, they are changing the things. So whatever they said, at the 2013, they changed in 2016, and now again they changed all the things. Most of the government sector is suffering of these changing things. So that is not very standard by them. Actually, you need performance based design for it because every every government factory is a little bit different from each other. So another thing is <clears throat> BNVC 2020 is not very specific to garment industry. Actually, for garment industry, you need some commentary. You need some special right of books, detail for detail analysis. For G2 garments, again, I say 2020 is not saying now it is G2. They are saying it is G because all garment factory are not same. It is different. Each and every garment factory is different. Their population different. They are materials different, they are arrangement different. So it has to be performance based. <clears throat> Another thing is, as far as if got an accord alliance, they are saying up to three story building, the stand is naked, naked, but we say no. If the building is very high, is very, very, very wide, very population there, you need some stand pipe and similar things. Is. And as far as sprinkler, BNB said, do not say sprinkler is must. They always say is an optional because sprinkler is a property protection system. We are talking about the life safety system. As per code, we always handle with the life safety system first. Property system is system is the owner's priority. He can save his own property as he wish, as he like. He can put his industry comp totally in air condition, he, as if he like to give comfort to his own worker. So this is not a mandatory thing. This is not the code compliance. This is the requirement of the person itself. 
accord whatever he doing this is a very doing very good thing for the garment industry but in many cases in many in many more cases they are doing i think much more which is not must which was not must i don't know whether i can finish with your answer Oh. Is the requirement of two fire pump as a mandatory thing? Yes, is a yes, because otherwise there will be a standby. There should be a standby. It is, it is mandatory. And how it is operated? That is there is an option. As for NAPA, there is no no option. But in BN, which there is an option, it should it can be diesel powered. It can be electric operated. If you have a single a second source. <clears throat> yeah, dear sir, is there any alternative process to make it acceptable for the fire pump already installed in the negative section? Yes. Actually, RSC, there is some meeting in the RSC. I was one of the technical person with the with the alliance about all the person. We we design two things. One is by brake tank. If you have a brake tank connecting with your pump. Then that will ensure initially. If there is a power loss fluctuation, that will give you supply. In that case, you can, you can handle the suction head. Another thing is, if you have <clears throat> negative suction up to a certain limit, depending on your power capacity, pump capacity, pump NPSH. There is a pump capacity that we call it NPH is value. The suction it can develop. If it is much lower than that, if this is a negative sign is much lower than that, if I am talking about the much, I am not quantifying this. If it is much lower than that, the pump must work. Only thing, as per NFPA said, <clears throat> there is some chance of reliability. But in any European standard, British standard, Indian standard, everybody accept the section head. In spite of that, for information, all over the country, all over the world, all fire fighting vehicles, trucks, which using by fire fighting people, fire service people in Bangladesh, so they have hundreds of fire fighting trucks, all are working with the centrifugal suction pipe system. They have suction. And in NFPA in 1956, NFPA. 1956, it allowed suction head. Only NAPA 20 modified this thing a few years back. Most probably, they got some accident. Somewhere, they lost some reliability, so they emphasis to increase the reliability. But this is a very special for NAPA, not all other standards of the world. American, other than American, European, all European, all Asian, they accept suction head, except NAPA. I think you understand. But this is a new requirement by Accord, which they introduced recently, not initially. Last one, the fire tank, water tank. If we select single tank for domestic use and fire use, <clears throat> so what is the rest of the question? For water tank, if we select single tanks, both domestic use and fire use, I think question is complete. Is not complete. Actually, yeah, yes, we can use single tank for both domestic and, and fire use, but you have to be careful about the. In any case, fire reserve cannot be used, so you have to put a valve or suction line for the domestic use at a height that always fire water use will be left there. But at the same time, <clears throat> you need some recirculation, otherwise the water quality will get right because there will be some mossing. If the structure is a steel roof structure, as it required to fire through all area, if 
is it required to fire put to all area you can see the table 331 that you 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 have the different rating of the structure so you have to put the structure according to the requirement you 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 see this my last lecture i showed that different class type of type one a b c d and the last one is unprotected that is the steel structure so you look how much height you need for the building corresponding you had the different element how much fire rating of the different element you need accordingly you have to give fire protection for more detail if you have the chance to getting fire code for vietnam that have much more detail if you can have your vietnam fire code it has everything detail for steel structure unfortunately or due to the different reason the vnbc don't have detail for steel structure so for information if you have like to have very detail you go for vietnam building code they have detail you know that the roof part i think the roof part has this conductivity with this some concrete so it is a fire rating, but not total same as not same. So you have, there is there is there any alternative? Yes, there is a lot of alternatives. There are a lot of alternatives. Right? That, that is and that I am saying you you can consult with the Vietnam Code or you can consult with others. There are a lot of alternatives, but you need some form of fire rate, fire rating of different elements, and that rating can be done by coating, by pasting cement, by pasting. Gypsum by pasting all other materials. There are some lot of alternative materials. In, 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 you, you can have a gypsum code that will give you some alternatives. If not carbonization, what type of gaseous system of the fire extension will you add? There are, there are a lot of Helen, Helen groups. Helen groups. There are a lot of Helen groups. So you have to, you, you can contact with the Helen, Helen groups. There are a lot of gaseous Helen types. Which type of? A stair. A L A R. I don't understand A L A R. Generally, for seven or eight story building, which type of stair system should be used? Actually, a stair system. I don't understand the stair system. Actually, <clears throat> depending on the position, interior or exterior. If it is interior, you have to make it fireproof. The stair. Not a stair system is a staircase should be a smoke proof. If it is internal, if it is external, there are a lot of design, so different design. So in a single word, it's very difficult to say what type, which type. Actually, a stair don't have city. Again, this type depends on the number of occupant you are you like to evacuate. So it is not that there's, there's no direct answer of this. Again, what is the specific requirement for foundation alarm system for G2? Actually, G2 have depending on the floor area, depending on the floor area, it varies. Depending on the fire protection, other scenario, that is your class one. Type one, type one A, class one. So it, it will vary. So is it manual or automatic? Detection system is always human. If it is, if there is a human surveillance is there, particularly in the floor area, the, at the working time, you know, do not need the detection automatic. But other than time, you need the automatic system. 
An alarm should be both manual and manual. A, a manual is much more reliable than the automatic one because there is a human being when there is a chance of less chance of false alarm. If manual, why? Because it is much more reliable. And actually, there, in the G2 government sector, there are a lot of people is there. So actually, there is every chance of false alarm. And, and most among other these governments mostly suffering from false alarm. In general, when you go to visit, you, maximum time you will find that they make it switched off because suffering from this false alarm. And actually, for to do anything automatic, you have to be very, very punctual about your, your maintenance, cleaning. Because if you do anything wrong, there is every chance of false alarm. It, it, it hampers in a different way. As the government sector, G2, not only, I'm not saying G2, it's government sector, there is a huge number of people at the time of what they can do it manually. If it is at night, we don't care, think, we, we think at the night, there, if there is no people is working there, if there is no life safety issues, so the owner can think its own way, whether he likes to, whatever he likes. So you have to think in that way. Actually, we are concerned about the life safety. It's the prime objective. Property safety, definitely we think, but it's secondary. As for code, we are serious about the life safety. <clears throat> what is the minimum height to be considered a system along with the height system? I don't understand the question. What is the minimum height to be considered? Height of what? Height of the building. I'm not sure. Actually, for a sprinkler, as per code, a sprinkler is not compulsory for anything. And depending on the height and the area, it had some suggestion to requirement for the hydrant. Only, only very few area in BNBC there is sprinkler, like just for assembly, theater area, stage area, this has a sheet sprinkler. And few other area, very few area. Normally, BNBC do not suggest a sprinkler, irrespective of the height. As we have previously considered 20 meter height to consider a sprinkler system. I don't know what do you mean by we. Actually, this height is not this is not true. In BNBC 2006, nowhere it is similar is, is mandatory. In, 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 in no case it wasn't mandatory. Only accord make it mandatory. High rise they make it mandatory. And and uh, we have we I have particular I have different kind of opinion. But sprinkler. It's different to say how much how much it is needed. As per because sprinkler is not again I'm saying is not a licensed system. It is a property protection system. It is a property as per NAPA definition. There is an NAPA definition. Whatever is the licensed system, what is property protection system? As far as per NAPA definition, this is not a life safety system, it is a property protection system. What is the base position to measure height of the building if there are underground floors? The, the definition is the, is, is the entrance. It is not a ground floor, it is, it is, the, is the entrance of the building. It is said to be, it is, it is, the, is the zero position of the building. Underground is not used to measure the height of the building. This is the custom, this is the purpose, this is how it is defined. <clears throat> it is very difficult to avoid the false alarm. There are dual system, you can make a combination of systems. If a, a, a number three or four all together come to a Conclusion, then you can detect, you, you can combine the system for the false alarm. You hear a signal from all these three or four, 
then it will it will take the signal from all these three then you can detect or you can reduce your sensitivity is there any latest smoke detection system type which is good for garment industry it is it is it is every day every day every day something is coming from the new one. actually every day there there are a lot of research neither ensure the false alarm but you can reduce by adding much more constraints by coupling more than two detector or three detector so whatever you do if you reduce the sensitivity you will reduce chance of getting alarm from the detector so you have to compromise you have to add just for your idea is an american data is an fpa research only 40% of the detector give proper signal in america out of 100 fire i repeat out of 100 fire in america only 40% detector detect properly this is usa system this research is done by nfpa so remember that one this is a statistical data of nfpa published by nfpa for america 30 percent they don't have detector 30 percent they give wrong, wrong detection no 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 detection only 40 percent give proper detection this is american system so how you get proper detection in bangladesh i don't understand and more data about the uk almost similar with with 10 percent variation only they have same thing if it is for uk this is for usa and and all result is done by by nfpa results <clears throat> the next question as you have said to you uh, use single type of detector what should we use consider to use multi detector what should we consider you should consider the detection efficiency you should consider the um, false alarm you should condition consider the air flowing tendency of our nature because our nature we always keep open our windows this is our nature we will put our exhaust system open this is our nature in europe in america they don't keep it open in europe you never find any fan any ceiling fan their room is closed that is air condition they control heat and cold temperature but our nature our habit is totally different in the night we open our windows nothing never is found in america or europe in, in europe it is never you find that in some area of america you can find that because america has different other condition so you have to think in that way also you can think another way also the death of fire incident in russia is the highest of the world 30 70 times than more our data it is 7 0 17 times more than our country of bangladesh though somebody says bangladesh don't have a proper data yes if we have 100 percent error 200 percent error what will happen then russia had if had 200 percent error russia have 35 times more death per resident in russia than bangladesh so you can imagine what is the real scenario so you have, you should understand something the statistics of the world the next question is can we keep hydrogen system without fire pump connection but to use for cms connection which can be used by fire brigade yes if you have very high water supply like in um, what do we say um, for Kirapur, there is a very high water tank so if you have that on that way or I, if i wish in future we have high dent with high pressure line then we can use with our pump up to a certain height i don't know why we can't hit that one yeah. but i wish i should have a high dent system in our country in dhaka if god gives us the chance and because fire brigade has their own pump they can handle the pressure if we don't have pump but professor Kalali. 
Uh, this will be our last question now. Um, there's too many questions. <laughs> so this, so we need to stop after this last one. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Professor. No. <laughs> there are a lot of questions. <laughs> what can I, do? I think I didn't finish half of them. So I, I choose just one. That, that's How fine. How should we consider coverage area of the detector? How should we consider coverage area of the detector that is, that is given by the manufacturer? All, all detector have its own manufacturer coverage area. So take that area as a coverage and have some other parameters of building size, building locations, room size, beam size, beam locations. There are a lot of other factors. But first thing is, what is said by the detector manufacturer? Second thing is your building arrangement, your room size, your, your, your beam areas, beam depths, a lot of things. So in single sentence, it is very difficult to say. So sometimes I have to say, I have to say sorry. <laughs> And I like to keep my email open to uh, to all of you. If you have a question, please ring me. You give me mail. I, I, I should try my best to give you an answer. My my email is M M Hilali 1956. I repeat M M Hilali H E L A L I at the rate sorry 1956. M M Hilali 1956 at gmail.com so i have to say goodbye to everybody <laughs>